Hello, Klaus here and welcome back to yet another video here at the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to do a progress bar just like you see right here. You can use in your videos if you want to explain to your audience what this section of your video, how long that is going to be. And it's a pretty easy effect to pull off in DaVinci Resolve inside of Fusion. And that's what we are going to do in this video. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Oh, and by the way, if you like content like this, please do consider to subscribe. Let's go into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and we're going to make this progress bar as you see right here. You can use that if you are making a video where you go to a new chapter and it's a short chapter or something like that, then you can show the audience how long that section is going to be in your video. And we're going to make this, of course, in Fusion and we're going to make it so you can add justice to the different clips like that. So it's going to fit in the time frame of your clip. So uh, let's do that. So first off, I'm just going to delete this clip here and um, I'll go up to the effects and I'll go into effects and I'm just going to drop in a fusion composition like that. Or I could, of course, just right click and create a new fusion composition right here. So I'm going to make the duration not five seconds, but instead I'll do this, let's say 10 frames like that. And this is in a 24 frames per second timeline. So I'm just going to create that right there. And I'm just going to take my fusion composition and put that down right here. Alrighty going to remove this because I don't really need that now. So I'll just go into Fusion and in Fusion we have here our media out. And that's the basics. I'm going to put in a background and I'm going to connect that to the media out. And in the background, I'll go over to the inspector and under the background here in the alpha, I'm going to drag this all the way down. So it's going to be transparent. Just like that. And I'm just going to take a, another background. And I'm going to take a rectangle, which is right here. And I'm just going to connect that to the background. And I'm going to take the background and connect that to the background one here. And of course, we could, uh, if we want to, we could rename these, make it more organized, which would be pretty nice thing to do, but for this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. Now, anyway, I have here a background and a rectangle. I'm going to select the rectangle and I can then go here and tick off the solid color like that. Then I'll just go to the border width here and I'm going to make a border. And then, you know, I can make this the size I wanted to. So let's say I want it to be uh, let's say I want it to be something like this size here. Something like that. Okay. And then you know I'm just going to go into the background. I'm going to change the color into let's say the orange like that. So that is the first part of this little thing here. Next thing I'm going to add in a, actually I can just copy paste these I have right here, just like copy. And then I'm just going to paste these two in right here because more or less it's the same thing I'm going to do. However, I am going to change in one thing and that will be in, in the rectangle. And then I'll go in here and I'm going to make this a solid color. Also, I'm going to take the border width and do like this, double click here. So it's on zero. And then, you know, I'm just going to take my media in here and I'm going to again, put this in the output of my first merge node. And I'm going to merge in a second here. Okay, 
and then I'll go into the rectangle and, uh, you know, I can zoom in a bit here. And I can go into the width, which is here, so I can make it a little bit smaller. And also I'm going to do something in the height. So we're going to make this bar here move. Um, and then in the width, I might as well make it a little bit bigger. Something like that, make it fit. Just like that. So more or less, this is what we want. Something like that. So now we are going to make this move, which is a, a pretty easy process because we are simply just going to take a, another rectangular mask. And I'm going to take the output of this mask and I'm going to put this into the blue input in this merge node, just like that. And as you see, nothing happened, but that is going to change when we move this down here. I'm going to make my mask a little bit bigger, like this. Then I'll go to the end frame, which in this case is frame nine. And I'll just go into the center here and I'm going to put in a keyframe. Then I'll go to the first frame, which is frame zero. And I'm just going to move everything out of the frame like so. So now we have this little animation here and that is exactly what we want. So in order to make this scalable in our composition, we do need to add in another note. In this case, I'm just going to push shift spacebar and I'm going to write key, keyframe stretcher. I'm going to take the keyframe stretcher. I'm going to add that in and I'm going to make sure that it's going to be added in between the merge and the media out. So if you by accident dropped it somewhere in the grid, you can easily push shift and drag and uh, add it in that way. So this is the important part actually of this particular thing here to make this work. So if we go up to the inspector, we have these settings up here and these need to be uh, the correct numbers. Otherwise this effect will not work and it's going to mess everything up. Okay, so we're going to have a source start and we also have a source end. In this case, uh, this is 120 and that's not correct. So we should change the numbers here. So it will be the exact end frame, which in this case is frame nine. So I'm just going to add in a nine. And the numbers here are going to be exactly the same. So we're going to change this number here to zero, or we can drag it there. And this should be a nine, which is the exact frame number. And uh, when that is done, we should be able to go back here to the edit page, put in our graphic, and we can see we now have this running, but of course it's not long enough, but we can then stretch this. And if we did everything correct, this should move accordingly to the time of our clip. So that is how you do a progress bar inside of DaVinci Resolve pretty fast and pretty easy. Anyway, I do hope you found this little video useful. If you did, please hit that subscriber button, give the video a like, share it with your friends if you think it would help them out. And if you want to be notified every time there's a new video on this channel, please hit that bell icon down in the corner. Until next time, keep filming, keep learning and keep sharing.